Well, I think because, you know, after the four years of university, we are not there anymore to help the students. So I think from, from day one, we need to uh, really empower the students to be independent learners because they need to learn later on in their life also uh, to keep this on. And uh, I always say, we get these people, they are 17, 18, 19 years old, they come from, from school where they just spent 12, 13 years in a bench and somebody was talking in front. These people are very smart, they are stimulated, they are intelligent. Now, give them the chance to develop as persons, as personalities. We have done this a few years ago, we created a, a, a liberal arts and science college where students with the tutors can uh, put together their own curriculum. Because another thing is when, when a student is today coming to university, he or she doesn't know probably I want to be a lawyer, I want to be an engineer and so on. So we give them the choice also to develop hybrid programs. A student may come in, I'm, I'm interested in philosophy and in computer science. So they can combine these courses. And in this liberal arts and science program, there are some core courses that everybody has to take, such as the history, world history, philosophy of science, ethics, and whenever whether you want to become an engineer or a biologist or a business person, you have to take these courses. And this is the trend that we see that we also in other programs will have this more, uh, I, I call it holistic integration of different areas and things that are important as a citizen and active in society. Well, you know, I, I used to work at a very old university, oh, okay. and, uh, so I can the difference. I used to work at, at, in the Charité in Berlin, which is more than 300 years old. And if you are in an in a, uh, administrative or management position, you, you probably can change course if you push very hard on the wheel, a bit to the left or a bit to the right. And the young university is still growing, has still uh, ideas, so for us it is, it is, it is in my view, easier to, to really develop new things. One of the things we developed is, is as we know that engineering and the hard sciences are extremely male dominated. A, lot, a large percentage of students are male. We started with a, a, a kind of liberal arts oriented science program where we give also the students flexibility. They say, I want to do something with sciences, but I don't know whether I want to be material engineering or a mathematician or a computer scientist. And this kind of flexible approach to guide students to a discipline also led that we have 50% females in this program. This is something that we can do much easier than in, in a kind of old-fashioned, crusted university, because as a young university still, all the staff that comes to us comes to us not because Maastricht is a beautiful city, which is true, but because they, they are intrigued by our educational philosophy. And that is different, I would say, in institutions that are more established than older in Europe. As Maastricht, with our European city, we said we need to really rethink the European University. And the university is a European invention, if you say like that, and everybody talks about uh, the ideas of Willem von Humboldt. I used to work at the Humboldt University in Berlin, and he has, of course, had fantastic contributions, but I think one of one of, he also was developing these ideas in a very centralistic uh, state, uh, with very elitist ideas. You know, his idea of, of, of the university was a university only for the elite. I think today, where a lot more students go into university, we have to re rethink this concept. So we were triggered by this call, and we said, let's put a group of young universities, one of those universities that, like we are, is more flexible to brainstorm and ideas, and we came up with this idea that higher education today needs to be accessible, it needs to be inclusive, and we, we, we coined the sentence, we want to be excellent but not elitist. And that doesn't mean that everybody should go to university, no. I mean, there's also a place for, for schools of applied science and vocational training. But everybody who should get access to university should have that possibility based on his or her talent, not on uh, the wealth of their parents or uh, uh, the old boys or, or girls network that, that is available. So this was our idea. We are the new kids on the block. We are all universities that are under 50 years. And we throw out this idea to, to, to uh, create, as a, in a pilot, 
an open space where students can really follow in courses wherever they are and we want to do this in an integrative way. So this was our idea and we were, there were like uh, 54 applications submitted for university alliances between five and eight universities and we got the highest score of all. We got 97 out of 100 points. I never got such a high score in a grant because we really triggered something in Europe that we say let, let's rethink education from the educational spirit from the quality and from many things I talked of the, uh, the ideas that we have in, Mas in Maastricht that in, uh, next to education we also need to pro provide active citizens for society. So that's what we're doing with this network or uh, alliance. You know, design that we want to have some courses that you can begin your course in Rome, do the next block in Madrid and then follow it up in Cyprus and, and of course you can do it across the university, it's a pilot program but you know we, we designed some, some themes, one is, is, is of course Europe, the future of Europe, everything that courses about Europe, uh, the digital society, these are courses that are present in all these universities, sustainability and uh, also citizen science. So, so, so we, we designed some topics in the beginning to see how this open course can work. And then we will evaluate it after three years. So it's a pilot and the idea is if a positive evaluation, then a number of university alliances can get also what we call a European statute, that you're not only a national university, but also have a European label. I think number one, uh, you have to have some, some sort of cultural understanding and, and, and understanding that people are different, have different backgrounds, different needs. And in our international classroom that we employ in Maastricht in our youth network, we try to, to create that atmosphere. Uh, number two, uh, we need to, to, to get rid of, of the idea of inequality, which is very difficult in the long-term process. But if, if we give our students the tools, for example, with global citizenship, uh, education where we train them in, in, in certain not only knowledge about these facts uh, but also about again the skills that you need to address this then you have probably make a good contribution a lot of our graduates work in NGOs and are active also in the next to their studies in, in this area so it's a long-term process but in the end I think the solution to populism and nationalism is knowledge it is uh, providing education, provide getting smart people, getting a, a, a generation back that is not depending on tweets as a knowledge base. So it's a long-term project, but but uh, we call this, you know, the the Maastricht generation. Not these are not students from Maastricht. These are students who are born after 1992. They have never seen Europe without borders. To them, Europe means something else to, than to the people, the 50-plusers, who, who voted for Brexit largely. So we need to build up this new knowledge base and we need to do it bottom-up. And we need to have, uh, uh, of course, it's a long-term perspective. You can't resolve this tomorrow, but you have to, to uh, um, put something, an alternative on the ground to uh, an alternative for nationalism and populism based on knowledge and based on understanding and based on uh, cultural skills. Well, it's very hard to predict the future, as you know, but I think that, that higher education will be, uh, will have a lot more variety both for the universities but also for the students you know we move away. I mean we're still living in a, in a, in a system that is campus based the students go to universities it's 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 one to one contact i think given the fact of technological uh, innovations of students that are extremely skilled in, in, in techniques that their teachers are not and the uh, possibility to uh, you know, more choose your own and modify your own course. I think we will we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a more holistic way of approaching this. It will be a lot more variety, a lot more, it will be a mix of technology and classical campus-based orientation. And it probably will also something that, that educational modules will not be uh, put into a four-year or three-year context, but will also probably be spread more uh, towards the life. What's the value of a degree? So I think universities, and I think you need to adapt to this and need to be a, a develop into academic communities where all these different aspects can flourish.
So it, it will be a, a much more complex a task to uh, organize university than now. It's still a, a one-size kind of system, so we, need, we will have more variety.